what is up what is up what is up hope everybody's doing good oops what's going on guys hope everyone's having a fantastic day on this thursday thursday um <laughs> so eagles have uh signed a new tight end today pretty good right um it looks like they signed their tight end too um i don't think it i don't think it's promising that it's gonna be like i don't think it takes them out of the draft or you know anybody but um that's good though cj uzuma to a one-year deal 6'5, 270 pounds fifth round pick in 2015 played for the jets played for the Bengals. um i think his last injury was in the afc championship game i think with the Bengals. i think um he had like an i think an acl mcl injury i think that year uh but he's 31 years old so you know he's an older guy more of an insurance policy you know for the tight end two spot going forward with that spot we'll see but i mean for depth it's a good it's a good move it's a good move can't complain about it it's a good move whatever it's a it's a depth move good move whatever um i'll see everybody in the chat what's going on ryan what's going on fables with joey max Bell, most underrated corner oh from Rutgers. yeah a lot of people talk about him i actually did a i think i did a membership video on him Once it's used late again. I'm never late. What's up, Shrek? What's going on, Alex? I appreciate you coming by. He goes to says, Hey, Joey, Sally just came flying up our drive. We are here. Do it up. Yeah, we're, I mean, we're at a point now. I mean, we have two weeks. I mean, we have less than two, like, we have less than two weeks. The 25th, right? The start of the draft. I mean, we're we're really close right now. Um, what I'm really excited about, and this and this is going to be on the video tomorrow because I kind of want to talk about it too. Uh, Derek Gunn was on a podcast yesterday. Okay, um, you'll see it in the video I put out tomorrow. Uh, he was in a podcast talking about the Eagles, and he had some insider news on the Eagles are not looking for project players; they're looking for day one starters. They're looking for play right now starters and are not talking about the first pick. They're talking about the first few picks, which is really interesting. I mean, because it's not, it's not obvious guys. Like sometimes you go into the draft and get a guy for the future or you get a guy for right now. It just depends. You know, it depends what round it depends, you know, depends if the, you know, you have a empty spot, whatever. Um, but that's a really good sign though. That's a really good sign. You know, Chris, I finally narrowed down who I want. Twenty-two patches. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, I can't wait to hear what the answer is. Everyone wants to move up in this draft, and they said they use certain as draft beat. I, dude, I'm not believing a damn thing. I'm sorry, but I think certain is their future. I mean, he's a young corner right now. I think that's one of their future pieces right now. I just don't see it happening, man. I just don't see it happening. Will there be somewhat of a player trade in this draft? It wouldn't shock me, but like I wonder like who it could be. I just don't think Pat Sertain is gonna be that and the, and you know what? You have to pay him on top of it. You know what I mean? I don't think paying him is like really the issue. I think it's just you know, what is it gonna cost you? A couple second rounders, maybe a second this year, a second next year, and a fifth for this year? I don't know. You know? So we'll we'll see. But Derek Gunn says insider news, hey, you know, like he think and well not he thinks, he knows and says insider information of the Eagles are not getting project players. They're getting they're getting starters right now. Which which is good. It's a really good sign. You know. Because realistically, guys, I mean that second round is gonna be fucking filled with good players. That second round is gonna be really valuable. Like very, very valuable. You know, 
we got ghost 41 man welcome to the camper tier dude all the extra contents there thank you for the support definitely check out the memberships if you guys have it but thank you ghost 41 for joining up man thank you so much um to let you know like for the summer june and july it's like my upgrading months uh the memberships are going to be upgraded to some other things there'll be some more emojis and more stuff uh for you guys to use for the chat so um i'm going to upgrade that this summer before the season starts uh a lot is coming so appreciate it. appreciate ghost uh um says no way the eagles doing that move but if they do that move super bowl champion what which move is that the move of patrick certain there's a shakes i don't either this is what everyone is talking about though it's just i i don't yeah but i think too many people have been talking about it where it's it's gaining so much traction you know Mom says, can we stop with the fake Josh Allen, Pat Sertain, Parsons trade ideas? I mean, look, for me, like, I don't care. The, like, the, the Parsons thing is just unrealistic because you're not trading with a division rival. It just wouldn't happen unless... I would think Howie would go after, would, would go after you know, Parsons if he was a free agent. Ne you know, if he's a free agent next year, then fine. As, like, still on contract and trading with the Cowboys, like, the last thing I would want to do is help them. And if Parsons is that much of a fucking distraction and... I think he's honestly worse than Slay when it comes to being a fucking distraction. Honestly. That's that's just me, you know. Don says Dejean Cooper Beeb, Edgar and Cooper would be freaking awesome. Yeah, it'd be a that'd be a perfect draft. What's going on, Ghost? I don't give a damn about the money order draft pick. You're talking about Super Bowl all day. Hey, look, if they make the move for Pat Sertain, I'm not gonna hate it. I mean, my opinion is my opinion is they're just not gonna do it. I just don't see it happening. Um, I think they like the cornerback group that they have right now. It doesn't mean they can't add to it. Cooper DeGene, I think, is the top prospect for the Philadelphia Eagles as of right now. I don't think it's over yet. I don't think that's it. You know, I, I because Cooper DeGene is looked at more as a weapon of your defense more than an outside corner or a guy that maybe could move the safety, which he hasn't played safety since high school, really, or going into college playing. Um, he went into college playing as a a high recruit playing safety, played quarterback, played DB. Um, you know, would I love a Jared Verse? Would I love a Dallas Turner? Yeah, one hundred percent. Like I don't like I I don't really have a pinpoint in this draft. I don't have like, oh, this is the one guy we need. I, I'm not that's not this year. Last year it was. And the only reason B. John Robinson was that guy is because I didn't think Jalen Carter was even gonna make it to fucking ten and you know, we moved up one. We moved up and we moved up with the Bears. Um, you know, one pick to nine, and, and ended up getting him. He fell into our lap. So, you know, Ryan says Devonta Smith contract extension coming soon. It's gonna be yeah. I wonder. And you know, I I'm hoping this contract gets done before training camp, at least by training camp. So we'll see. Uh, but at least you know everyone can relax now everybody was freaking out about oh my god he's not gonna get you know you know oh my god they're locking up Mulatto, they're locking up dickerson oh my god everybody was freaking out so much about it it's just crazy we need hard-nosed football players yeah I, I, well yeah I, but we need a you know what you know Fangio's a hard-nosed coach man we need an asshole in the building that's what we we need a douchebag coach. We really do. Well respected for play, and and you know if you're dogging it out there, um, that's the type of guy he is. That's why a lot of that's why there's some players that love him, and there's some players that really dislike him because of just how he coaches. I uh, says I would love to take a corner or wide receiver, but I don't trust the Eagles at drafting both positions. Haven't hit on it in 20 years. Yeah, no, I I get it. Like, well, I mean, I just, I mean, yeah, I mean the. Yeah, the the cornerback position has been the early since the early two thousands. Um, you know, wide receiver, I still think they have a lot of value in after after the first round. I'm saying, um, you know, signing you know Paris Paris Campbell and Devontae Parker is not saying that I, I don't think it's Paris Campbell could start right now. There's no doubt about it. Um, but Devontae Parker for one point two million dollars, he's here for if he doesn't work out, you know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. But 
I still feel like they want to. Re- I I still feel like they want. There's going to be a lot of receivers, at least to the. I'm, I'm saying as a wide receiver three, it's not really that hard to find. But if they want a a, a mid to top talent, that's that's really good. I mean, there's so many of them. You want a big receiver? You want a pure wide receiver three? Do you want a big receiver with speed that's going to be not only be your wide receiver three this year, but could be that AJ Brown replacement in a couple years? You know, so I think there's there's plenty of combinations there. Who says I think the pick is offensive line? We know the Eagles normally hit on them. Yeah, in the first round, yeah, it wouldn't shock me. Troy Fontano uh, could be. Uh, a mid teen uh, I mean, I don't know if he's more of a trade back candidate, a late first, or they have to move up for him. We'll, we'll find out. Um, you know, and we talked about Jackson Powers Johnson, Cooper Beeb, and, uh, you know, uh, JC Latham from Alabama that could start at guard right now and switch to tackle after a couple years, at, at, you know, switch to right tackle after a couple years when Lane Johnson retired. I mean, it, the the combinations, like I said, the combinations are are limitless, you know. Limitless. Which is Jordan Phillips going to visit Philly since he signed with the Giants since he threatened Eagle fans? Uh, says. Uh, they need to start this deal soon. Don't be like the Cowboys waiting all damn day to do the deal. Curse yourself more and do the deal early. Well, yeah, well, that's the thing. It's not up to the Eagles to do the do- deal early. If They probably want to get this thing done. The problem is, why does Devontae Smith's agent gonna, gonna not going to play hardball with Howie? He's just going to wait until Brandon Ayuk gets a contract, Justin Jefferson gets a contract. You know, he, he, Devontae Smith originally probably had the price he wanted and now knows that he's probably going to get more money now. So Devontae Smith is going to get, I, I would say he's going to get 26 to, I'd say 25 to 27 million. I don't think he'll get more than A.J. Brown, but he'll get probably just just as as much. You know, so, so we'll see. He could get a little bit more, though. He says, you think A.J. Brown will still be here next year since we have to pay Devontae Smith? Uh, I I don't see why not. I mean, they can always. I, it really. I, I don't think that's a problem. I think AJ Brown will be here for another year because if you get rid of AJ Brown next year, or you know, depending on like what they do at receiver this year, if you're really if they if they drafted an Xavier Leggett, if they drafted uh, a Donna Mitchell from Texas or something like that, then I would say, damn, they they're gonna try to get AJ Brown's replacement in a couple of years. You know what I mean? So you know, we'll we'll see. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know if they'll get rid of him next year. You know, what's going on, Suo? Dice says, "Mean Green DeGene." I'm I'm saying, dude. Philly 500 calls him French, and I'm like, dude, he's not French. We all know he's not French. Barry says, "Definitely an old grizzled uh, head coach. Someone like Jim Johnson would be great." I think that's what. What we need and obviously the offseason program needs to change and they need to get these practices more demanding and not you know sitting on lawn chairs and having a good time from what what it, what it seemed like they were doing last year what is said i can see Devonta deal getting done before the draft as long as it's done before cd chase and jefferson getting their bag that's what i'm afraid of though i feel like it's the total opposite i feel like the the agent is waiting until these other guys get paid which is going to force the eagles hand to pay him more money there's some receivers that got paid early, like Michael Pittman got paid early. Like some guys got paid early just to get it done. Um, so we'll see. Yeah, we just signed. Uh, we just signed. What's his face? Uh, CJ CJ Ozama. Uh, that's your tight end two right now. And he's legit. Your tight end two. You have a guy that's very reliable. Thirty one years old. He's an older guy, but a good depth piece. Um, not the future, but just a one-year deal. Probably very cheap. Daniels says, as terrible as the defense is, offense uh, is the least of your problem. Well, no, I, I get it, but you know what, though? This offense needs to score some fucking points this year. Okay? When you think about it, okay, how many Super Bowls or how many at least defenses throughout the years have been, you don't need the most, you don't need, you don't need the number one defense in the league Okay, to win a Super Bowl. Okay, there's been a lot of average defenses that do just enough with a high path to complement a high powered offense. 
okay? <clears throat> you need to score points this year. There's Kellen Moore is going to take off with this offense. It's going to be crazy, all right? So if you add an offensive lineman in the first round, I'll be jumping for joy. I'll be doing backflips, somersaults right here where I'm sitting because I know that is not only for now but for the future. But screw it. At this point, you know, you want to make your run game better with Saquon. You want to make things a lot ha harder. Now Saquon being in the backfield now is going to bring down another safety, you know what I mean, in the box. So it, it's going to make it a lot easier for these wide receivers and for Jalen Hurts, um, you know. It, it, it won't shock me, and it's not a bad pick. And, yes, offensive line is not the sexy pick. You know, I, I get it. So, you know, we'll see. Cowboys finally pick up a free agent. It's offensive tackle Chuma Edaga. I don't know who that is. Did they just sign somebody? Yeah, we got a tight end. Yeah, yeah. A JC late 18 penalties in two years. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I, you know, I, I I'm not gonna go off of, I, I won't go off of that. I mean, off of penalties. That's that's the first I've heard that, but that that's not gonna strike teams away from what he could be in the NFL, what he can be. So, Eric, said, I think the Eagles will resign AJ Brown when that time comes. You know what, Eric? I, I don't think it's I don't think that's gonna happen, unfortunately. I think I think if AJ it's it's tough. Like I don't like in AJ's mind, like can he can he really does he really want to play for another team? He's had so much success here in a short amount of time. Like, does he really want to go somewhere else? Like I can't me like in his own mind, I can't see him going anywhere else. But I can understand if he does because he's I, I think he's gonna reset the market. I think there's a big Big chance he resets the market, you know. But you know, we'll, we'll see though. Albert O, yeah. I mean, Albert O wasn't used last year. You trade for him last year. You didn't use him last year. When Goddard, when Goddard was even when the start of the season, you barely targeted Goddard. Then as soon as they started targeting Goddard, and he got more, you know, he was getting more catches. He got hurt. That he was out four to five games, and I felt like Nick totally just ignored the position. Don't throw in Albert O. Kind of like how when CJ when Chauncey Garner Johnson got hurt and they threw in Reed Blankenship. Like they didn't throw in anybody. Like Albert O should have been at least a starter, or at least I don't know. They should have got I mean, you, you gave away a draft pick for him. I don't care if it's a seventh round pick or not. Like you gave away a draft pick. Let's see what he's got. So, you know, we'll see. Uh, just don't be like the Cowboys. The cap always goes up. Always seem like a lot of down the road couple years. We're going to be like twenty six million for the top receiver. Uh, four top receivers, nothing. Yeah, it, it, it might it might not cost the Eagles anything because the Eagles have been very good with the cap space. You know what I mean? Like you had forty six and a half million dollars start a free agency. That's really good. The Eagles never really have money like that. But since the cap is going up twenty million dollars, the Eagles are getting fourteen point five million from the Hassan Reddick trade. You know what I mean? So you're getting you're getting the big chunk back next year on top of the cap going up. So the Eagles could have probably over sixty million dollars in cap space next year, which is great. But they really got to win a Super Bowl this year. If they get win a championship this year and then have that cap on top of it to make more moves next year, then great. That's awesome. But they have to draft well and they have to get guys in the building that are day one guys. And this defense has to hold up all year. You know, I'm not a fan of Fangio's scheme. But as a coach, I respect him. As a coach, I think he's the best man to run the Fangio scheme because he is the man that, that he's the man that knows how to do it. And and I think he'll have most of the um, you know I think he'll have most of the control going into uh, you know the season, which is good. So can't complain about that. You got no one knows what's going on, man. Appreciate the super chat very much, dude. You said check out Michael Hall, uh, DT uh, Jr. Uh, DT Ohio State. A uh, powerful kid, possible day two pick when should be dra uh, drafted as a DT. Oh yeah, Michael Hall Jr. I've 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 heard some things about him, and and uh, you know I think would be a good pick in the second round. Um, you know I I I would rather get a DT in the second than I would in the first. I because Philly was talking yesterday about like what if they got a Byron Murphy in this draft? What if they like decided like hey 
this is a do or die year for Jordan Davis, and they decide to like say, hey, you know what? Let's go get Byron Murphy and let's trade Jordan Davis, which was his idea from yesterday. Which I was like, eh, it sounds ridiculous, but you know, Jordan Davis really needs to show up. Like we're really hoping that this year is the year. Um, they need defensive tackle depth. Are they going to get it in the second round? I don't know. There's way too much. To be honest with you, I, I'd rather have a better secondary this year. I, I'm really want them to. Uh, I really want them to have a better secondary. Okay, uh, making tackles, having good, taking good angles on on you know guys going up field. Like I need, I need tacklers. I need guys that are going to pack a punch. That are not afraid to tackle. Um, you know the the defensive line. I don't know what it's going to look like with uh, Reddick being gone. But I think they need more of a scheme fit at the edge as a off ball outside linebacker to a pure defensive end. That's why, like, getting a Dallas Turner would fix both, you know, would be more of a fit. Um, you know, even getting uh, what's a station from Alabama as well as an outside linebacker, too. Braswell will be a, a, another guy that could play that uh, as well as I think is another scheme fit for the Eagles, too. So um, we'll, we'll see, man. We'll see. It's going to be interesting. Appreciate the super, by the way, bro. Uh, make sure I don't miss anything. We got Dre Diesel with the super chat. Thank you so much, man. Say, hey, Shakes just found out O-line is a complete, a completely smoke screen. DL or edge is what we are targeting. Ah. Complete, complete smoke screen for offensive line. Hey, you know what? It could be, you know, it, it could be. Because um, the only move that you really made in free agency as of right now is you signed Matt Hennessy that could play uh, guard and tackle. I mean, sorry, a uh, center and guard. And he had 22 starts as a center last year. Oh, 22 starts in general last year. So, um, But, yeah, there's always going to be this, uh, you know, sm a smoke screen. And offensive line, it, it could be. Because I feel like there's – Still going to be a lot of value with offensive line in the second round. A lot of value in safety in the second round. A lot of value in linebacker in the second round. I think there's the second. The Eagles have picked 50 and 53 in the second round, so it, it, sh it should be interesting. Appreciate the super, man. Does uh, one HPC even Sean McVay and Shan uh, Fangio was their toughest opponents? All Fangio got to do is beat Mahomes since he never won against them. He says, not just Davis, Nolan Smith needs... Oh, yeah, of course. I mean, yeah. Hey, Nolan Smith, you're taking a big gamble by getting, getting rid of Reddick. It's a, you're, you're taking a big gamble on... I'm not saying... But Bryce Huff is going to be a good player, okay? That $17 million a year is going to be dirt cheap by the time... And look, Bryce Huff might... I mean, sorry, but look at some of Bryce Huff's... Like, what, let's look at what Bryce Huff did last year in a rotation, okay? Unfortunately, he didn't play the whole season, but 10 sacks with just 43% of the snaps is pretty damn good. But we get to worry a little bit. Like, he hasn't played a full season. He hasn't put his body through a full season yet. You know, that's where I get a little nervous. But I'm not, I'm really not, I'm not, I'm not worried about it as much. Uh, as much anymore than I was. Um, that contract's going to look really good. Bryce Huff is a, that, I think he's a better edge rusher. I think he's better on the edge. Uh, I'm not saying than Hassan Reddick, but I, I think he's a little bit more powerful. Uh, I think his bull rush is a little bit better. Um, you know, so he could just explode this year in double digit sacks. Who knows? You know what I mean? But, you know, it could happen. Stuff says Brayden Fisk would be a nice pickup. Yeah, I mean, you pick up the, one of the best defensive tackles in this draft and great, you know. I have no issue. I have no issue with it, really. Do I think they do this on a third year in a row at DT? You know, a first round pick DT again? I don't know. You know, but we'll see. See, dude. Come on, big trap, big trag. Notice that our defense didn't win us the Super Bowl. Brady threw for 505 yards, elite offense, and above average win Super Bowls. And you know what, Suo? Being aggressive. Because if, if if Doug wasn't aggressive in that Super Bowl, we would have lost. If we didn't get one of those four, if we didn't get every fourth down conversion, we would have lost that game. Just by one three and out or a fourth down turnover. 
I, that would have been it. No, our defense was horrible. It was it was bad. It was really bad that game. Lady Franco says uh, Brand Dorlos, Oregon, six three two ninety. I'm uh you know linebacker stud day two. Yeah, Brandon Dorless Dorless is gonna be interesting too, and it can play inside outside as well. The guy is versatile too, so it could be a lot of a uh, lot of uh value for the Eagles. Does Joey know the mic is pan to the left? What do you mean pan to the left? I, I don't I had to my I had to get a new piece for the for the boomstick and stuff, so I don't know. I have no idea. Um It might be. I have to get I have to get a new mic soon. I've had this mic for a few years. I don't know if it's taking a crap on me too much, but it's because it just works out for me that way. <laughs> because I I I have to replace some parts. No, no, it's uh with the super chat. Thank you so much, man. It's just fun fact. I play I played against Eugene's high school growing up. I watched him wax my younger brother's old high what? <laughs> what the hell? Really? Damn. That's that's crazy. Um Cooper DeGene, man, I, I think is it, it's looking just looking like that looking a hundred percent towards that pick right now. Damn, but rip Boston Scott. That other kid got Boston Scott's number already. Yeah, I don't I don't know Boston Scott's coming back. For me, it's like I they barely used him last year. And I mean I think he could have been used so much more. Um, you know, unfortunately, it's just that's just the way they went, you know. Goes his corner linebacker and safety are much bigger needs. Uh, no, I, I get it. I want this secondary to be golden. I really do. I don't I don't want I don't want to beef up the you know, beefing up the defensive line is fine, but they, they got to do more towards the secondary for the future. They, they really do. You know, they, they really have to. So if you got time to look at Cedric Van Pran's tape, you're going to love it. I got I to check it out. Yeah, I mean, there's going to be some guys I just haven't looked at yet. I'm looking at guys every day, so pause. No diddy. I said we're going O-line the first round. Um, Sean says we have three starting cornerbacks now. It's not a big need. It's not a need right now, but it's going to be after this year. I think after this year, I think after this year, you're getting rid of Slay and you're getting rid of Bradbury this year. I mean, I think it's pretty obvious that's going to happen. I could be wrong, but sorry to say, but I don't, I don't think, uh, Cooper DeGene is not going to play outside corner this year. He's going to play inside if that's the case. Or they're going to move him for they're going to move him all over the place this year for matchups. I think that's what they're going to do with him this year 100%. I think that's you know, I think they could definitely do that. Um because I think they look at him more as a versatile weapon for this defense. That he's a move around piece. The more hybrid players you have for this defense that play multiple multiple positions at a high level, you have Sidney Brown, you have Chauncey Garner-Johnson. If they don't get a safety that they want in this draft, I think Justin Simmons could be a, a post-draft signing, you know, after this draft. So that's another thing to look after as well. Someone says, Joey, who do you think the Eagles are going to take if they trade up to top uh, to top fifteen or higher? If they go fifteen or higher, so if they trade with Seattle or well, no, Seattle's not fifteen. I think they're sixteen. I don't know if they're fifteen or sixteen. Um, if they trade top 15, it's it's going to be an edge rusher. It's going to be an edge rusher or... I think it's going to be an edge rusher, dude. It's either Jackson Powers Johnson or it's an edge rusher. It's either... It's going to be Dallas Turner. It's going to be uh, Jared Verse. I mean, that's that's all I could... That's where I could say. It's going to be Jared Verse, Dallas Turner, or Jackson Powers Johnson if they go top 15. That was the only three players... Latu probably, you know, is on the board. You know, I think those are your three guys you're going if you're top 50. We got Sue with the Super Chat. Thank you so much, dude, being so generous. Um, so just all the scenario, the way Sirianni didn't adapt to what Hurts wanted 
at the end of the year and didn't listen. If Hertz asked Sirianni if he wanted Philly, Philly, do you think he says no? I do. <laughs> yeah, probably. Remember when Devontae Smith, his rookie year, went up to... Remember Devontae, when they didn't treat, when they treated Quez Watkins like the number one receiver, not Devontae Smith? Remember, I think it was the Giants game. Devontae Smith went up to Nick and was like, give me the ball. You know, I want the ball. Get the ball in my hands. And, you know, and I think he, like, nodded at him and then never gave him the ball. So, sucks, man. Sucks, dude. But the new news today from Derek Gunn is that the Eagles are not getting a project player. And we're talking multiple picks, okay? Let me read this off. Let me read this off. Derek Gunn just said on Fly, the YouTube channel, in the podcast, he said that he's spoken to people inside the building, and they want to play. They want a play now type players from the first few picks this year, rather than projects. That's really that's a really good sign. I'm telling you, they can ace this draft. They can ace this draft. Ace it, ace it, ace it. So, I'm pretty pumped. By the way, I'm going to give you a little tease right now. It's it's not even what's close to, not even close to anything yet. Just wait. Um, I want to show you guys something. A little preview of something. Hold on. Where's it? little preview of something where it's not even close to being done yet there's a whole bunch of stuff not just this it's a whole bunch of stuff but we have something coming out soon something coming out soon okay and uh we're very excited for it so we will let you know you will see a full reveal of some things coming out soon let you guys know on that um Rocky says uh, appreciate the super chat Suo, very much right says matt miller just posted on bleach report we're looking at drafting a right tackle early to eventually replace lane possibly tyler guyton maybe a smoke screen i think guyton would be a smoke screen guyton where is guyton supposed to go i don't know and he says uh has jpj had a visit not yet no no, so as of now, Slay Bradbury and Rodgers. Yeah, I mean, right now, that's probably what it looks like. Yeah. The final product, we'll see. Um, Bradbury and Slay are probably going to be here. I mean, most likely Bradbury staying. I've been saying this for weeks. If they want to get rid of him, they wouldn't have. They wouldn't cut him late. It just wouldn't happen right now. Gray says, so internal sources here in Napa are having a watch party for Brock Bowers, who graduated here. Apparently, the word is the Eagles will take him at 16. That rumor's coming down from his family. I'm telling you, if they got Brock Bowers, I'm just going to say this. Like, the 12-man personnel, you have a replacement as your number one tight end for the future. Because really, by the time Goddard's contract is up, I think he'll still be on contract. And he's got a fifth-year option. So that changes the whole dimension of your offense because Brock Bowers is just more than a, he's not a slow, big tight end. Like Brock Bowers backs a punch, dude. His guy, his, his catching ability is his separation on the break of his route is just amazing. It's, it's crazy. And he's a Georgia Bulldog. So, you know, that's why I, I really want them to draft Javon Bullard so badly in the second round. Like, so bad. I think him and Chauncey has that tan. I think they'd be a, such a good safety tangent. So good. Um, you know, but we'll see, though. No, it says we have nothing to worry about the offense unless they have like a ton of injuries. We just got to go defense heavy in the draft. Even the linebacker position. I think the linebacker position is definitely going in a good direction. Jacoby Dean has got to have some availability because I can't say if he's good or bad, okay? But the injuries are just, Jesus Christ, three injuries, two two times on IR, you know? Um, Devin Wyatt, I think, is going to have a resurgence type of year. feel really good about. I feel really, really good. Um, I feel fantastic about Devin Wyatt. feel great about him. Um, 
I think he's a big re-sign candidate after this year. I think Devin White's the best linebacker you have in this in this group. I think it's going to be a, a good linebacker that everyone's going to really like because I think his biggest strength is getting after the quarterback, shooting the gap, and doing some things like that. So, um, getting I think Edgar and Cooper needs to be in the second round. So it's either it's going to be it's got to be linebacker in the second round. I have Edgar and Cooper as a second round pick this year. That's going to that one hundred percent. They have to get Edgar and Cooper in the second round. So, whether it's linebacker safety, linebacker, I don't know, defensive line depth, linebacker, uh, offensive line, I think it's got to be one of the th- one of the three combinations. Uh, since I love the move, uh, the move I love, Devin White. I still think. Oh no! As a whole, yeah, I don't. I, like, I don't know. Some of these, some of these other guys are going to be special teamers. Like uh, the guy we signed from the Saints. I think he's more of a special teamer this year. But he, he's more of an off-ball linebacker, which, which you know, an off-ball guy. He could play as an edge guy, and he could. And uh, the hell's his name? I just Zach Bond. Yeah, Zach, Zach Bond transitioned from a defensive end to an outside linebacker, and he actually showed a lot of good things last year um, with the Saints. So I think we're moving up 100%, dude. But I wouldn't shock me, bro. It says we draft better in the second round than the first. Well, I don't think that's... I don't think that's... I think in recent years, yeah, I, I guess. But I think how he's starting to... I think how he's starting. I mean, how he's got more control now is that Jeffrey Lurie's not involved in these picks anymore. We're drafting from better schools now, from SEC schools now. Um, you know, so. Hey, we said Jerry, I would love Bowers, but he'll be be going top ten. I said by Derek Gunn's comment is definitely sounds like Eagles are moving up in this draft. Yeah, I I agree. I agree. No, just goes to you, but what on the roster? How do you doubt you see cornerback in the first round? Uh, Sean says, however, I think the Gene first pick is very possible, but he won't play corner. Yeah, I think I think he I think he could play on the inside, but he might move around all around. I think I think Kellen Moore is gonna use him as a weapon just for matchups. And the one thing I like about the Gene a lot is his instinct and always trying to get his hands on the football. Sometimes he'll jump the route. Um, but his open field tackling is a plus i mean he fits the mold so well with this defense um and could to, to be here for years being that moving piece all around maybe disguising coverages maybe he'll kind of disguise coverages in the flat something like that um quick man chris where's seattle drafty if they're top 12 then probably going to be verse or turner it won't be bowers I think Seattle has 15 or 16. 15th, 16th pick. Yeah, 16. Joe Sharps, what up, Joe? Uh, you lost weight. Also, uh, hey, that's that's great to see. Uh, for <laughs> great, to, great to hear. Um, also, Bradbury's going to look much better next year. Better system and a system quarterback. Yeah, I mean, look, there's some Eagle fans that think Bradbury's going to look better next year. I mean, who looked good last year? I mean, seriously, who looked good last year? I wasn't a fan of Bradbury either. Uh, we weren't really a fan of anybody last year. Who played well with this defense last year? You know, under Fangio as a consultant, with a, you know, your this defensive line has to hit home. You're you're making it way too hard on your corners when you're leaving eight yards of space from these corners off ball. I get it, but this defensive line needs a push. Linebackers were, weren't even used. The Eagles didn't know how to blitz. The, and even if when they did blitz, they never hit home. Even when they did blitz, it looked sloppy. The blitz as a unit just looked very, just really bad. I said, I read the article where the Eagles signed Stefan Gilmore. Yeah, that's definitely not happening. talking about the dude from georgia no damn he's going to drop that fall down those his bowers don't make it past the colts they want him this is anybody that let him drop as far as an idiot no way he's going to drop outside of like top 10 at the most
Uh, Don said, Joey, maybe the Eagles trade uh, trade one of their second round picks and move back in the draft and pick up a third. I mean, that that's possible too. I mean, I think they need to either move up with the second round pick in the first round on the first night, or they're going to trade back one of those picks to get back into the third round because they have no picks in the third round. But there is a ton of value in the third round, though. There's a ton of value, though. Offensive line, probably a little bit of linebacker. It, it's there's a lot of value there. Offensive line, especially, there'll be a lot of value there. Safety, there's gonna be a couple guys you're gonna want. Eagles will have to move up in the second round in general if they want one of those guys aggressively. Chris, thanks to the great Eagles fan, Seattle's at 16. Um, if we switch picks, then if Bowers is there, no doubt coming here. Yeah, I mean, look, I if they if they get 16, if they move up to 16, I don't think Brock Bowers is the number one guy. I think he's part of the conversation, but do we think that he's actually the biggest target if they move up to 16? I think it's going to be Dallas Turner. It's Jared Verse. It's Layatu Latsu. I, I think it's an edge rusher, to be honest. I think it's going to be edge rusher, offensive line, or Brock Bowers. If they move... if. I mean, look, we all say this shit every year. Brock Bowers is going to go top 10, and then he's going to move down the draft boards. And then people are going to say, oh, why is he moving down? What's going on? It happens every year. Someone's going to someone's gonna hit. Someone's going to be right there for the Eagles. Bill said, I can't really uh, uh, see Milton being the disruptive at the nose. Then again, he can play outside. How do you feel? Well, no, he's going to play. He's going to play outside technique. He's not going to be at a... Milton Williams is not going to be a nose tackle this year. They got Jordan Davis, P.J. Mustafer. Um, who's the other guy always that's been getting hurt and actually plays all right? Uh, Moro Jomo, we'll see. Um, there's another guy. I'm, Jesus, forgetting his name. Uh, so we'll see. Um, but he will play on the outside. He'll play. He'll play more outside. He's not. He'll play. He'll play outside technique. He won't play nose. Which we still can't believe we draft Jalen Carter and Smith. My bad, Joey's all correct. Oh no, I got. I got you. So it says, should we get, should get a tight end in the later rounds, not first? I hate they bench first and second round picks. They get production if they don't play. The thing is though, Brock Bowers is going to get a lot of playing time. I don't. Kellen, Kellen, we're dealing with Kellen Moore here. Okay, he loves using tight ends. So if you don't get a wide receiver three this year. Brock Bowers, I think, is, is a good enough weapon as you could really get going forward in 12-man personnel. And what I mean, I think he's definitely – I don't think he's redshirting at all if he gets drafted. I think he's definitely going to be integrated very well into this offense. I, I don't agree with that. But um, no, I, I, I get the whole thing of drafting a guy behind somebody first round and he's a redshirt. Yeah, you're not re- – Brock Bowers is not going to get redshirted, you know. Because I feel we're in a dream world where if we think we're getting Bowers, we would have to trade the 10. Well, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying, Sue. Like, everybody, I'm telling you, like, everyone thinks specific players get drafted, like, very early. And then guys end up falling down, falling through the draft. And then everyone asks questions of why it's happening. Because I think people were, you know, people get too crazy, you know, that he's going to be a top 10. I, I don't, I, I he, he could be a, a pick at 10, maybe. But I think I think there's a chance he makes it out. Is everybody in that defense going to look better mainly because of a few uh, coach? I think most of the blame, probably a minimum of 50%, was just awful coaching. 90% of this blame is towards Nick Sirianni, 100%. Oh, 90%, but I'm saying 100% in my thoughts. Nick Sirianni is the main blame, 100%. He hired a young coaching staff that couldn't take over play calling. He took nothing from Shea Steichen's playbook last year. He looked stupid every fucking week. At these post-game press conferences, he made his defense worse by getting by demoting Desai and getting Matt Patricia in the building, or upgrading him to the to the defensive coordinator position. So, Nick is the blame for all of it. Sorry, he is. Which is last two is a big a big medical red flag. 
Yeah, I I get it, dude. Like, um, that's why I I I probably would get I probably get Jared Verse. I'd, I'd probably get you know Dallas Turner before him. To be honest. Think about how who how he brought in for visits. Most O linemen he brought in are second third round picks. Yeah. He hasn't really bought in a he hasn't brought in a top talent yet in the first round. If Jackson Powers got a visit, then I would say, okay, it looks more realistic, but we'll see. They've they brought in more offensive linemen than anybody. You're hundred percent right. A lot of smoke there. You know? The smoke is like you know, Andre Dillard they didn't have a pre-draft visit with and he got drafted, you know, so I you know, they could secretly have a lot of interest for somebody that that player might not even know that Philadelphia is a big target for him in this draft. Stewart says, Latu played two healthy years after his injury. Doctors wouldn't let him play if it was bad overthinking this Latu injury. Chris says shakes at 16 verse and Turner will probably be gone. If not, I think I agree. It'll be for verse or Turner. Yeah, that's that's what I'm thinking. If you're at 16, I think it's verse Turner or Jackson Powers Johnson or Brock Bowers. Much pieces 49ers sign Rocky. So yeah, I saw that today. One year deal. Yeah, I saw it today. But yeah, hey, Joey, you saw uh, Debo join IG live with AJ Brown where he was outside enjoying Eclipse and Debo got off live because. Uh, yeah, I saw I saw it. Which means it's been months since we signed Saquon, almost two years since we traded for AJ. It's crazy, dude. It's crazy. Because I hope we uh, pull a Diller to get powers. That would be great. Because that was a heavy defensive draft that year. That was a heavy defensive draft. The Eagles moved up a couple spots. I think they're at 20 or 21, 22, something like that. Drafted a Dillard there. Whatever happened to Shaq Leonard? Nothing. I mean, he didn't play well. I mean, everyone thought he was going to be the answer to our prayers. He wasn't. I mean, this guy's coming off of back, neck surgeries, back-to-back -back neck issues. And, you know, he was a good player for the Colts beginning of his career, man. Like, Shaq Leonard was a fucking monster. But, you know, he's had too many gruesome injuries to vital parts to his body, unfortunately. So it says, yeah, but anyone can get hurt at any moment, no matter what their medical history is, never be the same. Their guys and stuff. Yeah, dude, like, you know, people make a big deal out of, like, I get it, dude. The only thing that, like, he was, like, the medically medically retired Latu thing that happened with Latu Latu was in 2020. You know what I mean? Like that was 2020 when he was medically retired or something. I think it was 2020 when he was med he had that neck injury. I mean, Josh Sweat had a knee injury, a bad knee injury. He would have been a late first round pick a few years ago. Josh Sweat would have been a first round pick. Landon Dickerson had an eight came off an ACL. <laughs> so people need to relax, you know, like. The Eagles look into these things. You don't think they look at the player and they say, okay, they look at what, you know, the past injuries is going to affect them. How, how re recent is the injury? Land Dickerson came off of two ankle injuries and an ACL. I mean, seriously. And we got really nervous. Remember he like proposed to his, his girlfriend to be his wife, like on the beach and all oh, say off that knee, you know, like, people, people were making a big joke about it, you know? Ghost says he's really good. I'm not debating that medically is a concern is all I'm saying. No, it's it's good, dude. It's it's a it's a it's an opinion. That's all that matters. Like we're here just to it's an opinion, man. Tim Jurgen was was the same player. Tim Jurgen wasn't the same player after he got paid. Never mind him the back surgery after he got paid. Tim Jurgen was a great player for us. He got paid and he fell apart. Alshon Jeffrey got paid and he fell apart. It's just crazy. 
Which King says, is this a defensive or offensive draft? I think it's a little bit of both, but I think it's more defense. I think it's more defense. Chris, I'm a little scared how if he stays at 22, his previous 13 years of drafting in this area in the draft, he's been horrendous. Yeah, no, they have to move up. <laughs> 22. Let's go get Chop Robinson. How about that? Let's go get Chop. Let's get Chop in the building. The big, the big combine standout. This is uh, this draft seemed pretty deep. A minimum of like seven Hall of Fame players. Hopefully, we can get one. Might be Sidney Jones was supposed to be top ten. Yeah, Sidney Jones was supposed to be the first round pick for the Eagles. That that was supposed to be their pick. What was it? Fourteen. Sidney Jones because after after the first round was over, Dave Spadaro was having an interview like in the back room of the draft in Philly, and. He was supposed to be the first. He was supposed to be the first pick. Like corner was supposed to be like they gave it. You know, I'm not. I, that's drafting a guy in the second round coming off of a fucking Achilles. That was ballsy to do. That was really fucking ballsy to do. Off an Achilles, he just had an Achilles at his pro day, and they draft him in the second round. Like, what the fuck? What were what? What are, what were we doing? That's crazy, dude. Now I see why Howie does one year deals. <laughs> First, I feel more comfortable if Howie trades up. I I think, dude, I wouldn't doubt that he does. Seriously, I don't think we have to worry about if he's gonna trade up. I mean. I'm sorry, but it's going to happen. It, it's going to happen. Oh, Achilles, yeah. An Achilles injury is, is worse. Is 100% worse. It's definitely worse. That's like over 11 months i mean that's that's a that's that's a big injury then he came back and you know came back at the end of the year came back at the end, end of the year at 17 because we were you know i I, I forgot when he came back the year after he came back and then um you know he just didn't look great you know and look what he's done he's been to seattle he's been i don't know where the fuck else he's been he hasn't done anything I just be said, I thought we was getting Joe Mixon the second since we got Vic and Mills the second chance. Yeah. Should have got Joe Mixon. Should have got Joe Mixon. Yeah, well what happened was Joe Mixon, like, he had all these uh, you know, these I don't know. He didn't get arrested, but he had all these allegations of uh domestic violence or whatever it was. He like, hit on his girlfriend. I don't know. I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. BMXB says, uh, what's all the pushback about drafting Chop and his film looks good and his combine was great, so what's the issue? The issue is, is that he only had four sacks last year. And he didn't even have 20 tackles on anything last year. That's my issue. My issue is they're going to go off of analytics. They're going to go off of his win percentage is great in college because he beats his one-on-ones, but I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. But then he becomes this big standout at the combine, one of the best standouts. So I don't want him to turn into an analytical pick. Like, that's what I don't want to turn into. So that's where I'm kind of at with the whole situation. That's where I'm at. Like, J uh, Jared Verse, not double, you know, what he had, two back to back nine sack seasons. Leatu, 13 sack season. I mean, uh, the statistics are just too low for me to. I don't know. I don't know. But if you're moving up in the draft, you're not drafting Chop Robinson. So, yes, there's a pre-draft visit. I get all that. You know, I get all that. But uh, we have 131 in the chat. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you like up the stream. I appreciate it so much. We're going to go for another four minutes, and then we're going to head off. Um, we only did like a little bit less than an hour, but an hour. Tomorrow, we'll be back with a longer stream tomorrow. Um, we'll have a video out tomorrow, membership video out tomorrow. All that great stuff. Um, 
So we'll go for another few minutes, um, and then we'll we'll be back tomorrow. We'll be back every day. We'll have, we're we're gonna, we're gonna stream every single day, um, and yeah, we'll be ready to go. I said I feel bad for the top pick. Imagine being forced to play quarterback in Chicago. Mm. Uh, so what's crazy is Dejean broke his fibula and posted those pro day numbers right after being medically cleared. Imagine the uh, the shape he would be in by the start of the season. Yeah, dude. I'm saying, dude, like, that was a very... He's ranked, like, 28th on the RAS reports. He's ranked, like, the 28th best corner since 84 in testing. Since 1984 to 2024. 1980, what, 1982, 1984 to 2024, he's the 28th best testing corner. I mean, that's that's really good. He tested, like he. I think out of 10 points on his RAS, he scored a nine over a 9% on it, which is really good. Fantastic. Um, you know? Uh, so the chop was hurt last year. He missed games. He's a force out there. I watch every Penn State game. Hey, look, dude. I look, look, look. That's that's fine. Like, you know what? Like, I hope I'm wrong. I, I at 22, chop might be because of the if that, if it's because of injury, then and his statistics went down. If that's the case, then then you know we'll see. You know we'll see. I'm not picking anybody with trash stats. Don't have to be anything crazy, but come on, man. If you can't do anything against top talent in college, how are you doing? Do anything? And that's been the thing, too, with Chop is against top talent. That's, that's another thing. Kevin King went to the Falcons. He hasn't played in two years. I used to be a big fan of Kevin King when he was with the Packers. Uh, did beat the Ducks. I heard uh, something about Jim Carr only having four sacks his last year of college, but look how he took off. I don't know how many... I don't know how many sacks he had his last. I don't know how many he had. Well, so there used to be a head scratcher after every one of our drafts. E. Cooper, my guy, this draft would be pissed if Chop fall. He came over. No, I mean, I, I think, I think if Cooper gets to the se a second day, they gotta get him. He said David Ojabo was supposed to be top 15, still Ravens pick him. Yeah, coming off of, what, an ACL? Yeah. I get it, dude. I don't like taking guys off injuries. I'm kind of done with that shit. We've already done it. He says Devin Singletary get hurt every year. Derek Stingley gets hurt every year in college, and Texas still pick him at top three. I get it, dude. Jeremy Macklin or Devontae Smith? Devontae Smith, dude. Devontae Smith has got so much more ceiling, dude. Jalen Carter, Dallas Turner from the same area. That's cool. What's see, what's the whole love affair with Trotter Jr.? And this what's what's the whole love affair? His name, or is it like, is he actually that good? Once his four sacks for DT's very compared for an edge guy. Big difference. And I think that's the big yeah, I think that's huge. He's I, I I feel like I feel like with the edge guys they they should they should do a little bit more. Um because most of the times they will have the one on ones. But we'll see. Our junior put up some numbers. I, I I I've looked at a little bit of him. I have to look at more of him. I've been through a few linebackers already for this draft. So yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, we're uh, you know, we're less than two weeks. I mean, we're we're almost there, guys. We're almost there. Uh, we will have a stream tomorrow and a membership video of a video out tomorrow. We'll be ready, set, ready to go. Um, and uh, yeah. So make sure you subscribe. Eagles news every single day. Make sure you check out the pinned comment for memberships. 
uh for support and content doesn't matter what tier you get you get all the con extra content that's there um and uh yeah we'll be ready to go tomorrow and we'll talk more draft stuff tomorrow we'll be talking every day we'll be streaming every day this month on the draft so um you guys enjoy the rest of your day and um yeah see you guys on the next one remember next one up fall slide peace out guys peace out